Oh, thanks. I'm freaking out, man. Just like, just like our face. It's different material. Have you ever seen the Shining recut trailer? It's turned into like, you know, it's like a comedy. It's like, you gotta, I'll just, I won't, you gotta pull it up on a break. It is absolutely hilarious. Yeah. He's like, no, I gotta work on my own presentation. <laughs> 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 no. <laughs> hey, Jordan. I think we're just waiting for Matt, and then we'll get going. Okay. How are you guys doing today? Good? Great. Awesome. Um, first off, welcome to The Complete Athlete. This is going to be a kind of Z-Health approach to middle school fitness, a.k.a. S-Phase for kids. Okay. Um, when picking this topic, um, it probably picked me more than I picked it. And I did, it happened based upon my job and what I do. Okay. So I'm going to kind of be forced with this struggle to be talking to parents, which we're going to be you guys for the most part. And then when we go in the back, you guys are going to take your parent cap off and you guys are going to be kids. Okay. But because there's actually money to be made in youth fitness, I also need to put in some things from a, how to market it, how to market yourself to kids and how to charge money and what to look for when you are dealing with kids. So if any point during this, it gets kind of, if you can't tell if you're supposed to be the parent or the kid or the Z Health Master Trainer, just let me know, and I'll either clarify something or we'll back up. Does that make sense so far? Cool. Okay. So let's actually talk about your bags. I gave you guys a little bit of swag. All right. Everyone likes swag. Um, open up your bags. You guys should have um, some vision charts, a letter ball, and a DVD. If you if you have a laptop with you, if you guys wouldn't mind, just like someone just throw in the disc just to make sure it works. Okay. I'm going to talk about I'm going to talk about the DVD for one second, okay? Um, the DVD is about 5 or 6 minutes and it probably has 20 to 25 drills of real kids being kids and doing a lot of the same stuff that we're going to do here. So rather than write out how to play knee tag, rather than write out how to do saccades, you guys can actually see my kids real time doing it, okay? With that, though, the only thing I ask for you guys, please, I mean, this is out of respect to the kids in the video, do not share it with anybody, okay? Um, I have permission to use the kids, but you guys don't have permission to exploit the kids on YouTube or anything like that. I mean, it sounds silly, but these are just legalities. I really want to make sure that they're going to be taken care of. Is that, you guys all cool with that? Okay. As we start to move into the back and we start getting into the movement stuff, when you guys become kids, I'm going to make you guys all sign waivers. Okay, because part of the hard, the hard part is, is that I don't do PowerPoint talks when I'm talking to parents. I talk to the parents nonchalantly. Maybe we have coffee or something like that, and then I get to meet their kids. So I don't actually go, hey, mom, I'm going to sit down and talk to you for three hours about motivating your kids. No, these are conversations that I have with them, and I'm trying to put them onto an actual video. Okay, so that's like my kind of introductory housekeeping stuff. Now, I'm dealing with kids. I need to get your trust as parents. I know, I tried to Photoshop some, uh, some hair in there. But first off, let me talk about my background so you guys, so the, the trust is there from the beginning, okay? First off, an American College of Sports Medicine health fitness specialist. I've been a middle school strength and skill coach for the past three and a half years. I'm an American Red Cross CPR first aid AED instructor, okay? I run successful youth camps, and I've been doing this for over 12 years, okay? Your kids will be safe if you drop them off and have errands to run with it, okay? Your kids will be safe with me, full stop. And that's the first thing I need you guys to start thinking is that there's not going to be any, there's not going to be any time where your kids are going to be in danger, okay? So let's start about why we're here, okay? And I really want to start with why because have you guys ever dropped your kid off or paid money to go to a youth sport camp, okay? 
do you think is the focus on why they're doing the skills or is the focus on what the skills are going to be? What the skills are going to be, right? That's awesome, but you're still not going to figure out why. So the biggest thing is, is you, we need to start with why your kids need this kind of training and why this kind of training is going to be so important. How we go about doing it, because then by the time we get to what the skills actually are, you already know why you're doing it versus the opposite, right? So Mike, you had mentioned that you dropped off your kids or maybe, you know, you teach martial arts. And you said what? Were you ever told why your, your kids are doing the drills they're doing? Very rarely. Very rarely, okay? This is a huge problem for me, okay? I interviewed strength coaches and interviewed, you know, youth athletes, and I've been through youth fitness certifications, et cetera, and it's always what we can do for you, not why we're doing it, okay? So let's actually think about this for a second. We're here to gain an understanding of the importance of allowing youth athletes to excel on and off the field, okay? You guys ever seen the football quarterback? They get them with the big game. They're dressed up in a suit and tie, okay? That's the off-field part. Carrying yourself like a professional, and even we're talking about middle schoolers, but it doesn't matter. Having the respect for people when you're not in a locker room setting, when you're not in a game setting, okay? So we're going to talk a lot about motivation, okay? We're also going to teach your kids how to use cutting-edge drills, to make them fast, okay? And this is a very multimedia dense presentation. So we're gonna show lots of videos on kids who have worked with me for months versus kids who have just started working with me, okay? Next, we're gonna learn how to deal with challenging kids. Who here has ever dealt with a challenging kid before? A Couple of you, right? Okay, who here has a, a framework on how to deal with them? Okay, so we're gonna be talking about motivational strategies, okay? There's gonna be four different types, okay? Lastly, we're going to have fun. That's kind of been the whole theme of this entire week, right? Lou started off with recreation. Megan brought in fun yesterday. So if we're not having fun, it's not going to happen, okay? So we have to make sure that in training youth fitness, that we allow the teaching to happen using strategies that are fun and creative, not only for the kids, but also for me as the coach. Because if I'm not having fun, it's going to reflect how I train them. Okay, Megan can tell you that. Anyone who works with kids will tell you that. If you're bored or you're like, oh, here we go again, it's, it's done. You're robbing the kids, you know? So moving on. We got to enjoy the ride, guys. We have to enjoy the ride when we're dealing with youth fitness. Okay? Really important. Exactly. That smile and that kind of laugh you guys have, I want you guys to have that during the next three hours. Every time you see a kid on a field or you see a kid who get hurt, make them smile. Make them laugh. You have to make sure that you're enjoying the ride, okay? Sometimes you also are going to have to do what you have to do when you're training youth fitness. Okay, this means that you're going to have to buckle down and you're going to have to be the coach. Okay, you can't just be their friend. You're going to have to actually go, you know what, dude? We got to get this done. We got to get this done now. I need you to actually work. Okay, most of the time, though, we just got to know when to play. Okay, youth fitness has a, I don't even really know what to call it. Um, I was going to put in trend or an image, but I don't even think there is an image for youth fitness, you know? W would anyone here, if, if you guys were to close your eyes and think about youth fitness right now, what would you think about? Sports camp, soccer practice. That's it. Right, or, or specialized machines, or specialized fitness thing, or this, that, or the other. And guys, I, I, work with, I probably work with 20, 30 kids a week in all kinds of different environments. Some kids are, you know, privileged, other kids are underprivileged. And all of them shouldn't know when to play, but they're so concerned, or they're so burnt out, or the, the, almost like the play's been sucked out of them through coaches yelling at them, or parents being, you know, these, you gotta do this, you gotta do this, okay? So it's really important that we understand what some of the problems facing youth fitness are, okay? And we also, we get caught up a lot in the first one, which is they're a 12 on paper, but they're actually a 10 on movement, okay? And this comes down to something called the Tanner scale, which basically it tests the maturity levels on certain people. So, oh, you're a 12 year old, this is what you should have maturity wise. You're a 13 year old, this is what you should have maturity wise, okay? Well, they're 12, they should be doing squats. Yeah, but they move like 10.
they still move like a 10-year-old. So let's eliminate that and just train everyone like a 10-year-old and we'll be fine. Right? There's a discrepancy there between the age and we associate the age with the skill they should have. Megan talked about gymnastics yesterday. This is rampant in gymnastics, right? Oh, I have a 14-year-old who's, who's competing with nine-year-olds and vice versa, okay? And, you know, we don't have to talk about, the, you know, Russians and, and starting people late and stuff, but just know that there is a problem, okay? Fake image of youth fitness. We just touched on that. Specialized leg press machines for an 11-year-old, really? 11-year-old who can't kick a ball, catch something? Let's get the lats strong. That's the problem. There's an entire line. Seriously, if you guys look through club industry, um, training and conditioning, all these trait magazines, and they may not mean much to you guys as parents, but they mean a lot to me because I'm researching this stuff. And you see $300 machines, leg press, bicep curl for a 12-year-old kid. It just doesn't make a lot of sense, okay? Getting caught up in specialty camps too early. Okay. <laughs> I could go on and on about this. Just think about this for a second, okay? 12-year-old kid can't catch, can't hit the ball, constant pain. Do they really need to go to a learn how to accelerate faster camp? Learn, oh, my kid went to a shave 40 seconds off their, you know, 40-meter time camp. It was awesome. Well, how did it turn out? I don't know. We never did any pre and post assessments. Just because these coaches have specialty camps doesn't mean kids need to get started off too early. And it doesn't mean they belong there. Okay? So you have to st we have to stop thinking about what's right for me and what's going to be better for the kids moving on, okay? Overcoaching and cueing. Has anyone actually watched, I mean, you guys, have you guys ever watched your kids play their sport? Okay, have you ever listened to the coaches talk to them? Okay, do you think they get a lot of cueing? Do you think they get too much, too little cueing or too much cueing? You think too little? You think too much? Okay, what do you think? If he doesn't progress as a coach, he probably will be doing a lot. So he try to coach all. Try to coach it all, right? I'll get to you in one sec. A lot of coaching, but not very specific coaching. Like go faster. Go <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Critiquing. Yeah. Multiple places at the same time. Right, Jordan. I don't know if you're running like a bunch of drunken monkeys with a cue. <laughs> <laughs> It's just not. And listen, if you guys as parents, you guys, this shouldn't be a foreign concept to you. You should just know, wow, that, that coach just gave my kid 1,300 cues <laughs> to try to kick the ball versus taking the time and going, you know what, let's actually work on some mechanics. And that's a lot of the stuff that we talk about in this complete athlete, okay? We deal with fundamentals. We deal with games. We deal with teaching kids to play and get better at their sport by not doing their sport, by just having them have fun, you know? And then the last thing is a hoorah mentality. Come on, Steve, just get up there, do it. Come on, just go, go, go. Hoorah. That works. That d definitely works for some kids. But as we get into the motivation section, it doesn't work for every kid. And all of a sudden, you're getting kids who would have so much potential and so
four middle schoolers. Okay? Lastly, the parent. Pain. Hmm. You guys are all paying for services, okay? So your opinion should matter. Your opinion should matter. You guys are writing the checks. Okay, you guys are driving. Okay, Wanda, that video in the beginning, she drives 45 minutes, four days a week to drop her kids off to football because she said she got a better feeling from the coach. Think about that. That coach was 10 minutes away. What kind of, how do you think that, I mean, what has to happen for a parent to go, I'm willing to drive 90 minutes a day, four days a week, you know, that's a big chunk of time. Okay, that's more gas, that's more this, that's more that, because I didn't get a good feeling. That's, I mean, that's, that's sad, again, you know. But it also, I actually do kind of like that, in the sense that if you guys are bringing your kids, and you're trusting your kids, and you're paying somebody, and something doesn't feel right, and you can't communicate with the coach, or you can't communicate with their provider or handler, something's wrong. You're missing something big there, man. Okay, and don't think it's you, and don't think it's your kid. It might be them. If it's not a good fit, don't make it. Don't think it's you and don't think it's your kid. Don't, don't bring your kid into a car if they didn't do good in practice and go, man, you know, if you would just try a lot harder, you know what, maybe you wouldn't have this problem. Well, the kid's like, you know what, no one's ever just explained to me how to go about doing this. You know, so a lot of the things that we talk about in my camps, what, you know, whether this is the two-day a week, the four-day a week, the six-day a week camp or whatever, is ways for the coaches and ways for the athletes to handle difficult people, so to speak, okay? When we get to the motivation section, we'll talk about that a little bit more, okay? And finally, there's me, okay? I'm kind of the gap, okay? I'm the person who can speak, guys, I can speak to the coaches, okay? I'm not a parent, but I, I've been around enough parents that can communicate with you guys, okay? And the athletes, communicating with the athletes is really where I excel, okay? Get me on a field, I'm really happy, okay? But I also know communication and talk has to happen with the parents, okay? How many, you know, Michael, you had mentioned that do you, you say you worked with kids before? You, you dropped kids off somewhere? Or? I worked with kids. Okay, you work with kids. Okay. Has the, uh, do you have a lot of parents come up to you and go, hey, how's my kid doing? Is there anything maybe we could do better? Once a year. Once a year. <laughs> Once a year, okay. Megan, you? Uh, I have parents ask me all the time, um, how are they progressing? Are they listening? Are they being respectful of you? Um, and I also, as a coach, like to make sure I and parents, and talk to parents, but right. yeah, a lot. Right. Coaches sometimes seem to be afraid to talk to parents. Hey, you know what, I noticed, you know, I noticed Chris really hasn't been doing as good as he had been. Is everything okay? Is there anything I can do outside of, outside of practice to maybe make things better? Parents are scary. Parents are scary. You want to know why? Because they're writing the checks. No one wants to lose a payday. No one wants to lose a payday. And, you know, I wish this didn't happen, right? Obviously, of course we wish this didn't happen, but the reality of it is it happens all the time. And in the time that I probably talked about this slide, some kid's college or some kid's thing is gone. His motivation has just been kicked out of him, he's been yelled at, he just got hurt. That, that, that's a pretty crazy statistic. Okay, I don't even know if that's a real statistic, but I, I have a feeling it probably is. You know? Okay, so you know, again, me, you guys, I love, I love training kids. I absolutely love it, okay? But the thing you guys have to remember, and you guys may want to write this down, kids are not young adults. But every adult was once a young kid. That means that in every kid, kids should not be trained the same way adults do. Hey Chris, you're a middle schooler, here's your workout today. 47 drills, the volume is the volume of a professional linebacker, <laughs> zero recovery, and they have to do this for five hours a day, or at least until their form completely disintegrates. Okay? The flip side of that though is, adults were always once a young kid, no matter what. That's maybe a quantum leap where they can shift things. But, you know, the thing is that it, it, adults want to move just as well as kids, okay? And that's where I really encourage you guys as parents, when you guys are dropping your kid off in my camp, don't leave. Hang out and play. Please hang out and play with me. Guys, I can teach this stuff to you guys. I can teach this to them, I promise. I would say it the other way. If I can teach it to them, 
I can teach it to you. Because you just saw the video of Wanda pushing the kid. That kid's, uh, I think he's 12, 12 or 13. And then you saw Johnny, who's I think 18 going on 19. Okay, and his dad does the exact same stuff with us. Wanda was there. Jack was there, okay? And the two videos I've shown you, the parents have been there both times. Doesn't mean that they're all the time, but I want them to go, hey, this is what's going on. So when your kid talks about a drill, maybe you know what it looks like. Or when you watch the DVD, you can practice with it. You can create games, okay? So I made this cool little thing. It's called the cat triad, okay? I'm in the middle, okay? I need to know the lingo of the athlete. I need to know the lingo of the coach. And I need to know the lingo of the parent. So my job, kind of as this uh, subject matter expert, if you will, is to be good, proficient, and have good communication skills with all three of those people and all three of the dynamics that they may represent. So the coach and the athlete are going to have their own dialogue, and that's fine. I don't need to replace that as long as it's positive and it's with the goals of the program the coach has, and it's the goals of the program the athlete has. Okay, athlete parent. How's practice today? That sucked, coach was riding my butt, whatever. Okay, cool, well maybe, maybe I can teach you guys some motivational skills and some talk stuff that you can do. So if your kid does sound discouraged and sounds like they're getting burnt out, that you can almost cut it off before it happens. Because if you don't, the kid gets in the car, he goes home, he, he's got a bad chunk with that coach. He doesn't like that anymore. A couple bad chunks a week, a couple bad chunks over the month, okay, not done. It's not going to play, I want to play anymore. I used to love it, what happens? Well, the kid get a beat out of him. It's not fair, okay? Coach and parent, here's your check. Thank you. It's probably about the, or, you know, your, you know, your kid has a lot of potential. I'm running the specialty camp, you know, and then all of a sudden the coach becomes a salesperson, okay? Which it should. A, a, a coach's job, if the coach is trying to sell a program, he needs to be an assistant buyer. Okay, he needs to assist the buying process and not be the direct salesman. Okay, it's he knows what's best, but he also go, hey, you know what? I'm sorry, I just sold you guys on a four-day week program that's going to kill your kid to do everything else that may actually be good for them. Whoops. Those those are your one-time parents, your one-time parent, and your uh, I'm sorry, your one-time athletes, one-time clients. You get them for those four weeks. You never see him again. Oh, the kid did great in my camp. I haven't seen him again. He must be crushing it. Really? 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 Is that what you really think? I mean, it might be true. I'm not saying it's not true. But there's a lot more to the story. Okay? Coach, athlete, parent. This is another big one. Okay? Do you guys think an athlete may get embarrassed if the coach is yelling at him in front of the parent? Yep. You know, Mom, I just wish you wouldn't come to my games. I get really embarrassed by you there. You know, I get it. Middle schoolers, for sure. But at the same time, it is these people are these people need to all be together to create a good circle of not only involvement, but advancement for our athletes. But especially at a middle school level, do you know how hard it is to do something wrong to a middle schooler that makes them not want to do something? Like, you really have to, I mean, they have to be beaten down, guys. Seriously, I mean... I, do you work with middle schoolers? Yeah. Okay. Pretty, I mean, they're, they're big balls of energy, right? For the most part. For the most part, right? And Megan, I'm sure you see it too with your sport, you know? Her sport's a little bit more specialized. Uh, I'm sorry, you do um, martial arts as well? Okay, so the most specialized sports, right? So it might be a little bit different than the recreation stuff. You know, conceptually, it's kind of the same. Solo, solo sports do have a little bit of different dynamics. Okay, and solo sports do tend to be... Um, not harder, but the time commitment tends to be a little bit greater because, it, I mean, how many hours a week do your girls practice on average? Um, nine, depending on the level, nine to 30. Wow. Nine to 30 hours. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay, let's take, okay, so that's six hours a day. Let's say average is six hours a day. Every hour and a half, you're getting yelled at. So you're getting yelled at four times a day. Four times a day, times a week, that's 20 times a week you're getting yelled at. That's 20 bad reps. It doesn't make any sense at all. Okay? So here's the motivation, here's the, uh, the breakdown of involvement. Now, 
Each one of these we talked about poses its own communication style problem. Okay? Different communication styles, different ways of talking to them are going to happen. Okay? So what I did is I actually got this from the IYCA, which um, they actually currently are probably the better, if not the best, certifying body as far as um, youth development goes. Um, I'm one of their, I'm a certified level one specialist. I'm also a certified speed and agility specialist. Um, really good stuff. Really good stuff. There's a couple missing things, and I think I did a really good job with designing the complete athlete program and filling in the gaps. And a lot of that stuff is technical. Because coaching wise, these guys are spot on. I learned a lot, I learned a lot about coaching stuff and how to communicate, reading their stuff and watching their videos. Technically, though, I think we can do better. Okay? So four main types, and each one presents its own challenge, okay? Are you guys okay? Can we go for like another 20, 30 minutes to give you guys a quick break? You guys good with that? Okay. Sure. So four types, and we're going to break these down a little bit further, but let's look at them. Yes? Can you pause that for a minute? Yes. Mm. All right, moving on. <clears throat> Up to this point, are you guys comfortable with this concept on why there needs to be better interventions with youth fitness? Right? Or, or, at least you're getting, or at least you're starting to maybe get the gear shift. Okay? Before the break, I mentioned that there's going to be four different types of motivation. I've categorized these into high motivation, low skill, low motivation, low skill, high motivation, high skill, and then low motivation, high skill. If that's confusing, I'll make sure you guys get the PowerPoint slide. <laughs> Think about these terms for a second. High motivation, low skill. What do you guys think about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I consider actually myself with sport a high motivation, low skill person. I want to be there. Put me in coach. I'm not going to score, and I may run the wrong way, but I will run my fastest. They haven't been taught the skills. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, and there is a, uh, there's an elegance in putting the terms this way because it uses the word motivation and it uses the term skill. Now, these are going to be out of order based upon the slide you just saw, but I promise you all four are going to be there. So we're going to look at a low skill, low motivation person first. Okay? Typically, these are kids that you're not going to want to call out in front of the crowd. Hey, come on, Steve. I can see you're really shy. Come on up here. Shut down. <laughs> ain't ain't going to happen, you know? Um, often overweight. Maybe they don't look the same as their peers. Maybe they've been labeled clumsy or in the Z terms, wafy. They might be wafy kids, okay? Um, typically, if I'm working with these kids, I will not do this. All right, cool. So what you want to do? And, and I'm not the tallest guy in the world. You guys you know, shouldn't take a PhD to figure that out. So some of these middle schools are bigger than me, you know, which is fine. Um, if I have a kid who tends to be low skill, low motivation, you doing cool with everything? Good. How's everything going? I'll take a knee. I'll take a knee and try to talk to them, okay? I'll try to directly. So in that moment when I'm talking to them, it's about them. I'm not addressing them in front of everybody. I might let everyone else play. Hey, how's everything going, et cetera, okay? So low skill, and you guys can write this down if you guys don't want the PowerPoint, but if you do, that's fine too. Low motivation, high skill. I call them game kids. Hate to practice, love the game, right? I'm not really motivated to be here. Why? Because I was born on third base. I don't need to be motivated to be here. I'm already good. I already got the skill set, right? I just let them go play. Let these kids play and try to inspire them. You know, try to give them, try to give them a little bit. Give them some of your motivation that you have as a coach and that passion that you have. And then let them play around with it so then they can take that passion and, and inspiration you gave them when they're running out in the field. Okay? Let them go out and play. Kind of what we just talked about. High motivation. low skill. Again, guide them. Guide them in the direction they need to go or where you think should be best for them. These kids are ready to rock. 
Me. Let's do it. I will I will kick that football to third base. <laughs> With a smile on my face, okay? Take time, okay? Take time to teach them the skills. Spend a little extra half hour with them. Spend an extra 10 minutes with them. Maybe, hey, hey, you know what, guys? Why don't you, why don't you, you know, talk to the parent. Talk to you guys. Yes? Much more from, from what I've seen, um, very few low motivation, low skill. Um, a lot more high motivation, low skill. Because these are the ones who have, the, the parent, you know, I've, they've somehow gotten to my front door. I've somehow, maybe it's, maybe it's a lot of their friends, or they saw how good their friends are, or these are the kind of go-getters. These are the ones who want to, hey, I want to be there. Maybe I'm not that good, or maybe I'm kind of shy, or I'm going to show you a video here in a minute where um, one of the kids was low, low skill, high motivation. I, he was in a group with high motivation, medium skill kids, and he excelled. He excelled dramatically. So junior high, um, because it's a sign-up process, I don't know if you guys know, kind of backstory. Um, so I'm a middle school weightlifting coach so to speak, okay? It's an after-school program that's funded by a 21st century grant, so I get grant money, okay? It's, that's how I get paid, and that's how some of the videos, all the equipment you see is paid for. It's a sign-up process only, so the kids actually have to sign up for a, it's now called sports skills, it was called fitness and weightlifting, but we weren't getting any females, okay? W which, you know, to me that matters. Actually, I wanna have a diverse group of kids. I don't wanna have just boys, I wanna have some boys and girls, you know? Um, so those kids all want to be there, but they just don't have the skill. So those are high motivation, high skill. Yeah. The low, not to say you won't, but this is more like the gym class. They're forced to be there. They probably don't really want to be there. And it doesn't mean they, just because they don't succeed doesn't mean they can't improve. You're typically, they're typically, the mom's not, the parent's not going to go, here's $300, help my kid. Because the parents don't, the parents are still pre-contemplating. The kid doesn't know what he wants, etc. Okay, and I don't know if there's a connection quite yet. Um, maybe after hearing this, if you guys come up with some, the kind of sports these kids play. If you think of, of a gymnast, 30 hours a week, high motivation, high skill. They want to be there, and they're developing the skills, and they love it. Okay, um, so I think it's going to depend on the sport. Yeah, and I haven't, I haven't really quite kind of worked out too much of this chart, but I mean, th it's there's a lot. Th this whole chart, guys, I could be sitting here for three hours just about this, okay? But as long as you guys start to know, hey, you know what? Where does my kid, you know, here, let's do this. Michael, you said you coach um, martial arts, right? Okay. So can you think of a kid right now, and Megan, you can do the same, and if you guys have kids, think of the same. Can you guys think of, how many kids can you think of right now that are low skill and low motivation? And keep the number to your head. I was just thinking like that one kid that's like right now that's only into playing beach ball, like he's doing the things, and that totally surprised me when I was a kid. I, and I was, you know, not, wasn't overweight, but I was always trying out, and so I would be out there like trying to be there, trying to know what I'm doing. Right. And then being bad at it. Right. The whole, the whole. The, Right. Yeah, yeah, totally. Michael. I'm always surprised if there's so many kids that they're the characters in my interactions with them physically or just like, but then I talk to the parents and then the kids can't stop talking me out about what they did in karate class and you can't make them go. And no, don't pull me out or whatever. And like, you would never guess by the way that they are in class or when you ask them how you enjoy things. <coughs> Right, so, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. 
Anyone else? Can you guys? Th- I mean, it, this doesn't have to be kids. <laughs> you guys get it? It's not. It's not. This is not about the kids. I mean, it is, but it's not. The goal, the overriding goal of this complete athlete program, and really what I try to do, is to get them if they are here. Maybe to that stage. So now they're getting skillful. The motivation hasn't caught up yet. Now they really want to be there because, wow, you know what? We're learning new skills. So now they're high motivation, but maybe now they're low skill for the new skill. That makes sense. And this is the ultimate. These are your clients. Middle school to high school to collegiate if you can keep them. It's a road map. Okay, so that's a little about how we have to go about talking to kids. Okay, now we're going to get into the big meat and potatoes about why you guys are here and what is complete athlete. I've just told you why you guys have to do it. Painted a picture, painted a story. I've told you how we typically need to train these kids. Let's talk about what a complete athlete looks like. So here's two kids. <laughs> Not to single anybody out. But when I'm talking about high motivation, low skill, I'm talking about the one in the middle. And when I'm talking about high motivation, I'm going to say high skill. I'm going to talk about this guy right here. And there's some technical things for you guys. that This is your master trainer part. They're kids. They're not little adults. <laughs> it's better than it would be if they weren't training with me. Okay? <laughs> Let's leave it at that. Okay? And I apologize if the video's fluffy um, or fuzzy. It's just what it is. Let's watch this video. Who won? First one. Why? You guys ever heard of a hip turn? Okay. Yep. Go. Ah. And quick time. This is a lot easier because you can. Go. Watch. You guys see that? Did, did anyone not see it? You, you, you see? Um, did, yeah, I'm going to. Go. Right there. Two feet on the ground, ready to move. Whoops. You just lost. <laughs> which kid, just based on that, which kid do you think has been training with me longer? The one in the green. I worked with him for it's probably his third summer, first summer. I'm, visi- I'm visually showing you proof that when your kids get dropped off to my camps, they're safe. They're going to have fun. They're going to recreate. Okay? And they're going to be better. This is not a, well, we'll see if they do. No, better. There's a video. I have, I mean, I'll show you guys some videos. Tomorrow. I have videos of, I mean, th- I wish I could say that this didn't happen a lot, but this, is, this happens every single session. Okay, going through a lot of videos for this presentation and just, you know, looking at stuff, the kids, I can tell the kids I've been training with because they all look better. You know? So it's important. So how do they go about getting there? How do they go about getting to move better? I've talked to you about motivation ways and, you know, obesity and statistics and stuff like that. Well, I use this. It's called the quickness hierarchy, okay? This is what a lot of the the training template stuff that we do in our camps comes from. So we talk about visual and vestibular drills. So um, has anyone here, I forget, did anyone here ever, has anyone paid for their kid to go to a, a specialty camp or a sports camp for the summer or something? Okay. Did they do any visual vestibular work? No. Nope. Was it was it a sports camp or was it a uh, like a like a YMCA camp? It was like a interesting camp. Okay. Nothing. Right, uh, Doc. You had said you dropped you dropped your kids off at camps. Okay. Are they any visual vestibular work? None. Okay. Maybe some stances. I'll, I'll give the coaches the stance work. Sure. Maybe. <laughs> Transitional movements. No, maybe you tr- transition from the back of the room to the front of the room. 
You transition from not having your water bottle in your hand to having your water bottle in your hand. I mean, we're not talking real stuff. And the stickler to all this stuff is, guys, most of this stuff comes from a $100 DVD. <laughs> S-Phase. It's Lee Taft stuff done better. It, it's Lee Taft stuff done Z-Health. It's a little master trainer tidbit. Buy the DVD. Okay? Uh, linear speed mechanics. Teach them how to run. All right, cool. So you're going to start here. Uh, we're just going to work on your 40. Go. Go. Pick your foot up higher. Go. Really? That's their linear speed mechanics. That's what they get if you watch it. Raw horsepower. That one's, I was a little bit apprehensive about putting that in there, especially for middle schoolers. Um, there's actually a really cool, um, in here, maybe on the next break, make sure your DVDs work. Uh, there's a little bonus feature of kids doing plyometric work that they probably shouldn't be doing. Um, but they do it without hurt, and, and it, it actually looks really good. It, it's kids, literally middle schoolers, doing standing, push-up, falling for reps. So falls, does a couple push-ups. There's a couple of the kids doing flips and stuff. So the raw horsepower, the raw horsepower almost would be the result of training the other attributes. Because training a kid for raw horsepower, probably not the best. Something's probably good. No. Let's just leave it at that. No. Okay? Foundational work. That's what, you know, foundational work should be what the quickness hierarchy could be called because that's what it is. It's foundational work for sport. Easy. Okay? Ultimately, when my kids leave my camp, they own the basics. They're not returning them. They're, they didn't rent them. Like you, you rent skis, you rent a skateboard, you rent bowling shoes, you rent stuff, and you give it back. Nope. I give it to them through practice, through encouragement, through stuff like that. Now, in the beginning, I showed you guys a picture of a dog, right? Did anyone think that was weird? Show a picture of a dog. We're talking about youth fitness. What the heck? Really? Look at that. It's a ball being thrown at the dog. Okay. Now, here's the irony of this. Here's the irony of this entire picture. It's not just dogs. You got to see, guys. Dog. Patriot. Dog. Patriot. Patriot. Dog. <laughs> Your kids got to see, okay? So we do do vision drills. And you guys, when we go in the back, we're going to have a little bit of fun, okay? I had to put that up there. It's just <laughs> one more time. <laughs> one more time until you stop laughing. I just I got to put it up there. But again, remember the last slide of the, uh, the third dog I showed? You got to have fun. Uh, and that's what it's about, guys. It's about laughing. It's about having fun, you know? There it is one more time. Boom. He probably caught it, though. Do you guys think he caught it? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so we're going to recap, okay, because I've been talking for about an hour now. And I've thrown a lot of stuff at you, and this is not a lecture. It's part lecture, part movement, and then at the end I'll talk about some opportunities that you guys can have to get your kids training with me. I started off with why, okay, and this is a really important topic. I need you guys to understand why we're doing this, not what we're going to do when we get there. So if you don't understand why, you ain't going to care about what it is. Okay, so why? Kids... The kids camp that I offer, the kids, get, the kids end up owning the drills. They don't rent them. And that's a simple little line, but if you think about it, you know, let me ask this, Doc, you had mentioned you put your kids in a camp, and Jordan, I think you said the same thing. When you left the camp, did, the, did, anything, did they bring any of the skills home with them? Did anything really? Okay, okay. Um, right, okay. Yeah, okay, cool. And, and again, I, I hate to keep plugging this, guys. This is, this is a DVD of things. If you, if you forget what we did, pop it in. The really cool thing is it's kids, so it's going to be kids watching kids, not watching adults. Because kids are not little adults. You can't go, all right, Steve, I'm going to show this video of a grown man doing the drill you're going to do. Doesn't even, uh, give me a break. Give me a break. It's completely crazy to think that that's going to work, okay? How? Is complete athlete going to benefit you? Okay? By knowledge of a variety of skills and this stuff. 
These are the skills that are taken home with them. Doesn't happen in one session. Doesn't happen in one week. But I guarantee you by the end, you know, whether it's, you know, I, I typically do five-week sessions, basically broken up into two-day, three-day, or four-day sessions. Doesn't matter which one you choose. You saw the video. That, those kids are on two days a week. So if your kid on a two-day-a-week program, train with me two hours a week, with minimal stuff done outside, can make that much better, imagine what four days could do. Imagine what four days and then encouragement afterwards can do. Imagine with having a disc, you know? One more time. So fun. Okay. So, and what does Complete Athlete offer? Hopefully it offers a complete athlete. That's kind of why I picked it. We're not talking about an athlete who's a jerk when he gets off the field because he made a touchdown or because he's good. You know, guys, I, I started powerlifting. I'm awesome when I powerlift at a rec center. When I powerlift around other powerlifters, I'm an idiot. I don't look as good. So it's getting your kids to be good and to actually act complete, emotionally, physically, biologically, on and off the field. Okay, whoops, we'll talk about that later. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. Before we go into the back, I need to know, does anybody have any orthopedic broken bones or anything that will prevent them from moving? Okay? Not, Not MG, okay. What I'm gonna do then is, this is kind of off the record, MG is gonna be our clapper and our go person. Go. Yep, so we're gonna go in the back. Can you, you can, you can reposition your chair the exact same way. We're gonna first start talking about some of the games that we play. And then we're going to kind of go into how this stuff is going to look when we actually train. So if you guys need maybe, I'd hate to take more than five minutes, but if you guys need time to either change, um, you may even go outside because I, like I wouldn't mind some sun. Um, okay, so we're not going to go outside unless, um, okay, does anybody have proper shoes to kind of do some light S phase work and catch a ball? Well, it's a grounds wet too, maybe just for safety reasons. It might not be. Okay. Jordan. Yeah. A, I'm, I'm looking forward to entering this as a whole wheel that you can use, side by yourself. Yeah. Unless you can take the camera outside, I get this all on camera. Gotcha. Okay. Never mind, Kathy. Jordan just brought up a good point. The video cameras are inside. Yeah, it's easier. Okay, so if you need to change, great. If not, we're going to go meet in the back. Bring this yellow thing. They're called tennis balls in the United States. I'm not sure what they're called in European countries, but we're going to call this a tennis ball. You don't have one? No, I have one. I'm oh. Like, why, why are they called in, in different It was just a bad joke. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> no. All right, so let's go in the back, guys. <clears throat> He's a 10 on movement. That's real. These are real problems, guys. Just because backgrounds, eight, you know, all this stuff doesn't mean anything in real world, okay? So the first thing you guys are going to do is you're going to find your neutral stance. For most kids, it looks something like this. Okay, but we're going to try to be a, as somewhat adult about this as possible. And you're going to stand on one foot. Good. And we'll pretend. So now everyone's going to wobble a little bit. Because this is what typically they do. Whoa, oh, so hard. And they laugh and we have fun. Switch feet. And the warm-up doesn't have to be long. I, I very rarely will do assessments either, guys. They're middle schoolers. I don't need to assess them. Okay, I do do an auditory drill, which we'll do. Um, which is an assessment, but it's also just for fun. So um, come back to neutral. Now, a lot of times, too, especially with kids, is lunging stinks. They, they, they can't kind of figure out lunges, so I'll typically say something like, all right, guys, now we're going to work on some lunge patterns. These are some things that you may find in your sport, and they're usually like, I don't care, and I stop talking. Okay, it's, I, it's serious, guys, I try to explain it to them, and they just, I don't care. So what we're going to do is you guys are going to step out to the side. doesn't even have to be perfect, to be honest with you. Rotate to the left or whichever side you are. Good. And let's do some shoulder rolls. Other direction. Good. Back to neutral. Switch sides. Rotate. Nice tall spine, if you remember all that stuff. Other direction. I also try to keep things really simple. I typically will not do lumbar circles with them. I will not do a lot of neck drills. Um, over time, as I've seen them, I absolutely will. But at first, there's no reason to because they, they, SMA, they don't know that they don't know. And to try to teach a 13-year-old where the lumbar spine is, unless it's a one-on-one -on -one setting in a group, it's a waste of time. Complete and utter waste of time from what I found. Okay? So we're going to take your fingers. I'm just going to go like this. Good. 
good. And what we're going to do is you're going to separate your feet a little bit. Good. So now, who here has heard of the term plyometrics before? Good. What do you guys think of when you hear the term? Jumping. Cool. You guys ever think of landing in the term of plyometrics? <laughs> Typically not, right? Let's just leave landing to chance. Yeah, but because, and this is more of a, you guys are kids, but you're, I also need to convey why I teach certain things that I do. So now you're kind of kids who are master trainers, which probably isn't too far off. Um, <laughs> the, um, we got to teach you guys how to squat a little bit. So what I want you to do is I want you to think about throwing your hips back and down. So you're going to end in this position right here. Good. And then you're going to come up. And we're going to do this nine more times. You okay? Eight, let's do two more. Nine, ten. Good. Okay. You guys are going to line up over here. <clears throat> um, how many of you are there? Two, four, six. Yeah. Line up in a single file line. Good. And what you're going to do is you're actually just going to start to skip and just create a good arm swing like this. And then when you get done, as soon as he gets to about this line right here, the next person is going to go, and you're just going to, when you end, end to the left, and then get right back in line, okay? Go. Just nice and skip. Don't worry about the height. Just go, go twice, that's fine. Good. Okay. How'd that feel for everybody? Felt good? Okay, so now what you guys are going to do is, did that hurt anyone's knee? No, nothing fell off. Cold? Oh, okay. So now what you guys are going to work on is, <clears throat> I'm going to give you one thing to focus on, and that's going to be is as you're coming up, think about pulling your big toe to your knee. Okay, so same skip. You're just going to think about big toe to knee. That's the only thing you'll have to think about. Go. Big toe to knee. Big toe to knee. Big toe to knee. Good. Good job. Do it one more time, please. Okay, how'd that feel? Fine. Good, okay. So that actually was a way to teach linear mechanics. Okay, <laughs> kids don't know what linear means, but that's fine, okay? Basically, we warmed you up, taught you a couple skills, I gave you one thing to focus on, okay? Now you're gonna focus on your arms. And what you do with them, I actually don't care. I just want you to actually start paying attention to, okay, am I bending them, am I moving them straight? What am I doing wrong? while you're thinking of the heel, or while you're thinking of the toes. So toes up, just think about what your arms are doing now for me, Dempsey, okay? Go. Sorry, MG, you can do this next. Do you go through twice? That's fine. <laughs> yeah, no, there's no reason. To. Okay, how'd that feel for you guys? Fine. Good, right? Warmed you up a little bit, right? Give you a purpose. We focus on some things, okay? So now you're going to step out. I'm going to need you guys to separate your hands about shoulder width apart. I'm sorry, arms distance apart so you're not going to hit anybody. Good. You, uh, let's come forward, everybody, if you can. You know what? Let's come forward, and let me set you guys up this way. I need three people in the back, two people in the front, and I'm going to stand right here. So, uh, Dempsey, I need you over here. Kathy, can you go right over here? Um, Dempsey and Megan, switch because you're shorter. Excellent. And I'm going to have you spread out a little bit. You're going to stand in the middle. Um, Kathy, come over a quarter of an inch. Stop. And can you come forward and right there? Good. You guys are going to put your hands behind your head. You guys are going to take your left elbow to your left knee and do cross crawls. 
Good. We're going to do 20 of them. Good job. Anything break? No? Okay, great. <clears throat> uh, where is Shannon? Shannon? Shannon, can you come here for a second? Okay. Um, you said you guys have Achilles are okay as far as uh, moving around, doing some agility work? Good, good. Shannon, you okay as far as... Okay, so you guys are going to partner up with somebody, and then I'll give you an extra drill after you partner up. Partner? Yeah, sorry. Shannon, come on over here. Okay, so you're going to stand three or four feet away from your partner. So if Mike's my partner, I'm going to stand about maybe this distance apart. I'm going to get comfortable foot position, so I'm going to go here. This game's called knee tag, okay? And it's a great way to treat to um, start to get kids to give them targets to try to touch and to try to go for, and it's also going to try to create fast feet, okay? So if Mike's my opponent, what I'm going to try to do, and he's going to try to do this at the same time, is I'm going to try to tag his knee, and he's going to try to tag my knee. So if I went in like this, I get a point. Move your leg out of the way. I missed. And then he may go in for me. Go ahead. Whoops. This way. Spread out so you guys aren't going to start bumping into things. Do not do this, though. So Mike and I are playing. <laughs> you can't get me. I'm way over here. Uh-uh. Try to stay within the confinements of, well, let me do this. Mike and Phil, you guys come over here. This is your little circle, okay? Ladies, I'm going to put you guys right here. This is your little circle, and you guys are going to get this little circle, okay? First person to 20 is the winner. So you're trying to tag the person's knee. Whenever MG says go is when you start. MG, call stop. Okay, stop. everyone hit the deck for plank. So if you don't know what plank is, you're going to get in a push-up position just like this. Nice, tall spine. Okay, does everyone remember what number they were on? Four each? Okay. What number were you guys on, Shannon? Sixteens, okay. And Megan and Dempsey? Eleven and four? Okay. So when MG says go, you have to pop up and continue playing from where you left off. Okay, you guys are going to be earning your breaks today. Just wait one second, MG. Yep. Just give her like 10 seconds in that position and then say go. Okay, call stop. Okay, stop. stop. Stand on one foot. What number are you guys on? <laughs> what number are you guys on? 17. 17, so you guys are close? Done. You're done? Okay. So you guys are on 16 also. Switch feet if you haven't. Oh, okay, so. Okay. You guys will get a break in a second. 
So whatever you want, just say go. You guys get the idea? When she says go, that's your cue. Back on. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Excellent. Just call stop. Okay, good job, guys. Hang out. Grab a sip of water. We're going to meet back here in like a minute. So you guys get a minute rest, a.k.a. water. Um, if you need to change or make any adjustments, that's fine. Just scoot back over here as soon as possible. <laughs> yeah, you guys. <clears throat> so I mentioned to you guys in the beginning that there's games that we play. There's also athletic transitions and athletic foundational work. The next drill we're actually going to cover is going to incorporate some of the athletic drills and some of the games together and it's going to be called Close the Gap. Okay, It's going to be based upon two specific drills. The first one is going to be called a static athletic ready, which is a fancy term for saying where your feet are going to be and what kind of stance you're going to be in. Okay, The next drill I'm going to teach is going to be called, we call it a hip turn. And as the weeks progress, you guys are going to get better at this. But for right now, just make sure nothing hurts. Okay, so the first drill is you're going to separate your feet shoulder width and a half apart. Good. Now, from here, I know some of you kids have gone to basketball camps before. You've been to other camps where they emphasize keeping the knees over the toes. So some of you may have been taught this before. Okay, we're going to make a little bit of adjustment. And we're actually going to say, I want your knees slightly inside. Okay. Good. So what I want everyone to do is stand up tall. You're going to roll your feet in just a little bit, and you're going to crouch down like this. Good. Go a little bit wider for me, Megan. Dempsey, a little bit wider. Good. Come up. Good. How does that feel? Easy enough, right? Okay. So that's the first part of the game. The second part of the game is in most sports, you guys remember that video where the kid had to, they were doing what's called a hip turn, and the kids had to turn in different directions, okay? They were turning right in the video. Again, some of you, especially in the basketball world, you'll see this a lot, where one foot will stay planted. We're actually going to teach a little bit differently. And it doesn't mean your coaches were wrong when they taught it to you. It just means that they may not be exposed to stuff that I've been exposed to, or, or maybe they just haven't kept up with some stuff. So from this way, if I want to turn to my left, OK, which everyone put up your left hand. Good. I'm going to bring it down. I'm actually going to think about just whipping my feet around and end in this position, OK? It could be 45, it could be 90. The game we're going to play is actually based upon doing it to a almost behind you. And we'll, we'll do that in a second. So just play around with getting down in this position. And when MG says go, you're just going to turn to your left. It could be 45 degrees, which means if I'm going 45 degrees, when I do it, where should my chest be facing? Some of them will. <laughs> okay, so a 45 degree, if I was going to go to the left, 90, 45 degrees, my, my thing, uh, this part, chest, should be facing that angle right there, okay? So for you guys, when you turn, I want your chest to be facing that Z health sign, okay? For you guys, when you turn, you guys are turning left, I want your chest to be facing that, mm, uh, see where that door's closed? That's where I want your chest to be facing. For you guys, when you turn left, I want your chest to be facing this line right here. Or, yeah, well, this way if you were doing it wrong. So when you do it right, you <laughs> want to go. <laughs> your chest is going to be facing almost the same way because you guys are basically in the same line. <coughs> okay, on MG's go. So get down in your position. Yep. Go. Good. And step out of it. Good. How'd that feel? Good. Let's get back down into your stance. Good job. Okay. So now you're going to do the same thing, but you're going to do it to the right. So for you guys, when you turn, since you're turning to the right, your chest should almost be facing the woman's bathroom. And if you overshoot it, maybe the skeleton. So somewhere between there. For you guys, when you guys are turning to the right, you guys are still going to have your orientation to the wall over here. Same thing for you two. You guys are going to be facing this way, okay? So get down. Good. Okay. Get back down. Go. Great. Any problems? Cool. A and again, guys, this is your first rep of doing this. Some of you are really good at it. Others of you 
hey, I have you for f- eight more hours, nine more hours. I promise you as we start doing this stuff, it's going to get a lot better. Okay, so if it doesn't feel right now or the person next to you beats you, that's fine. Okay, so that was a hip turn. And again, all this stuff's in the DVD. Hip turn to the left and a hip turn to the right at a 45 degree angle. Okay, do you guys want to try something fun? Okay, sometimes in sport, we don't always get the luxury of running forwards in an angle. Sometimes somebody's running past us and we may have to actually turn to get to them. Okay. The purpose of doing the hip turn, especially in this position, is um, if I'm here and someone runs past me, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this for a couple different reasons. If you look at the position of my knee, this may be really bad for your knee, okay? Have you guys ever had any of your favorite athletes? Have you guys ever heard of your, they, they, they can't play anymore because they hurt an ACL or they hurt their knee? Or maybe you guys see your favorite athlete wearing a knee brace? Okay, so we really want to protect our knees when we're doing this stuff. So if I'm here, I'm going to apply the same concept of throwing my hips, and I'm going to try to just turn in this position. Okay, some of you may get a little bit off balance, so if you have to turn and almost step into it or stagger stance a little bit, that's fine for right now, okay? Again, this is your first couple reps. Does that make sense? Yes? Ideally, you will. Um, if If you happen to fall into it now, great. If you end up this way or something, that's cool too, guys. Again, you guys are so new at this, I, I really don't care how you guys end for right now. Because, again, this is the segue into the next game we're playing. Okay, so MG is going to be our cue. And, and, and MG, on a quick side note, guys, MG may be a mom who's watching or videotaping. I really, again, I try to incorporate him as much as possible. So she may just be a mom. So she's a mom right now. She's Megan's mom. Okay. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Just so it's going to be, a, this is 180 degrees, okay? Which means when you end, you should be facing the walls, the opposite direction. Go. That was good. Okay. Does that feel okay for everybody? Okay. Do you guys remember who went left? Who went right? If you went left, you're now going right. If you went right, you're now going left. Good job. Okay, how'd that feel? Not as good? Okay. Sometimes if someone starts running past us in sport, we got to chase them. Okay? So the next game we're going to play is called, I I call it Close the Gap. Okay, and the whole concept of it is I'm going to use Phil and Megan. You guys okay? Okay, so Phil's going to stay about right here, and Megan's going to start over there. And this, this game serves a couple different purposes. One, it, it, teaches, it teaches the person in the stance to differentiate, turn to the left or turn to the right very quickly, which is a skill as you guys start to progress in your athletic development. You're going to see this over and over again, okay? The whole point is, has Megan's running towards Phil? She's going to have to make a decision if she, wants to turn t- if she wants to go past them on the right or past them on the left. What Phil has to do is Phil has to then go, oh, she's to the right, she's to the left, and coordinate that hip turn based upon that position and then chase her. Okay? The whole point is the gap. Do you guys think the gap should be big or should be small? Small. Because that means that you can get to them quickly, and especially in a game like football where space matters, you're right on them. Okay? So Megan's going to, let's do a dry run. So we're going to walk through this first so you guys can see it walking, and then we'll do it full speed, okay? So Megan, you're going to walk towards Phil, and then pick a side, left or right. Phil's going to turn, and the chase is on. Okay, so come come back. You're you're going to be eventually, yeah, when we actually do it full speed. So just run. I want you guys, you're not, we don't have a field, so I want you guys to run, I don't know, like somewhere by the predator sign. Okay, so like right here. Okay? Yeah, just a gentle sprint. Nice. Very good. So that actually tells us a couple things. One, it tells us Phil is very good at differentiating left for right when it comes to body movement. What does that say about Megan, Megan's ability to cut? She adapted, she switched sides, okay? 
the third, and we're going to get into cutting because I get that question a lot. Um, the second and third week of the camps is typically when we cover cutting introductory wise. And then if I see kids for the second or third month, we actually start busting out a little bit more of the advanced drills. But at first, guys, it's stances and it's that it's the uh, quickness hierarchy thing we talked about. Okay. So the game's called Close the Gap. Are there any questions on it? Do you guys understand what the concept of it is? Do you understand how to play? Yes? Okay, partner up again, but let's think about orientation here because I don't want anyone to clunk heads. So I'm going to have Shannon and Kathy. Um, just Kathy's going to be by the door. Shannon, just go here. Um, and you're going to, if you run at an angle here, I'm going to put you guys are actually going to be, let me move this table out of the way. <coughs> Phil and Megan are going to be back here. Um, running this way. I'm um, sorry. Um, yeah. You guys are going to stay over there. You guys are basically ru be running the same pattern as these guys. Right? So let, let me just think about this for a second. So you guys are going to run. Can I move this cord? <coughs> okay. So if she goes to the right. Hey, guys, don't make this. Don't make the. Guys, listen. Don't make this a, uh, a fast run out just for room constraints. Okay, um, and no, if you have to put the brakes on, just put the brakes on. Okay? Did I not position? Can you guys, are you okay? No, 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 you guys are fine. Do it, do it this way. You guys, you guys should at least play. Yeah. Okay. Okay, fine. Yeah. No, no, thank you. So, MG is your start. Okay, and I'm going to stand over here so I don't get tackled. Okay. Good. You're going to do uh, three times each partner, then switch. It's okay. It's okay. She's gonna say. You went, and I was like, "Well, okay." Sorry. She's such a kid. These are kids, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, on MGs, go. Go. This is two. Okay, How, how'd that feel for the guys running? People, people running, felt good? Good. How, how did it feel for the chasers? Fun? Cool. So now switch partners, or I'm sorry, switch positions. <laughs> On MGs, go. Nice. Did he? Go. There's two, right? Yeah. Okay. Last one. Good job. <laughs> okay, guys, <laughs> that should be three each, right? Okay, grab a sip of water, and we'll meet back here, and, you know, you guys get a 30-second break. And if you remember, grab, you guys need a tennis ball? So I need two tennis balls. So I have one. I just need one. <laughs> guys, come on back over here. I No, I have them right here. No, I, I wrong math. Okay. So do you have fun with that game? Can you guys see how playing that? And you guys all did really, really well. Um, if you had a field, I'd be really curious to see if the gaps would still be as close or if you guys were able to open up and, and to really see it full speed. So if you guys get a chance, it's the weekend, you guys have a break from school, 
feel free to go out in the field and try this stuff. And, and again, it's all in the DVD you guys had, and this is the stuff that I teach at the camp, okay? The next thing we're going to go over, it's called a tennis ball relay, okay? And you're going to need two groups of three. So I'm going to need three people here, and I need three people there. It's not really a game. It's just more of a it's a it's a continuing circuit. Okay. Okay. Single file. So behind each other. Megan will be first. You guys over here. Okay. All right. So here's what's going to happen. The second person in line is going to have the tennis ball. Person number one. is going to run up. Can you guys see this seam right here? I just, can you just imagine where this pole is? You guys are going to run up to that line, person one, OK? So they walk up. Shannon, you can walk through this with me. They walk up. OK, stop. Shannon turns. That ball's being thrown to him. So throw it to Shannon. Shannon now is going to run. So you can kind of, you don't have to turn. You just catch it this way if you can. He's going to run this way. Phil's going to come up. Shannon's going to throw the ball to Mike. <laughs> Ideally, because of the ceiling, you may have to try to find a way to throw it. Um, and now the whole loop starts. Shannon, you're going to run back around, throw the ball to Phil, run up, throw the ball to Shannon, throw the ball to Mike. Do you guys see what's happening? Yeah. So it's just going to create a continuous loop, OK? You guys, listen. You guys, do you guys see how to? Do you guys see how to do that? Okay. Okay. Do you guys have any questions on that? Yeah. You guys are playing this game for two minutes. So pace yourselves. Okay. On MGs, go. right Do, yeah you stay half you throw to him <laughs> here Phil no you throw it to him she throws it to you and you come over here now you throw it to Megan now you run back now, Megan, you run up. Kathy, you're going to throw it to Dempsey. Good. You throw, you throw it to Megan. Good. Throw it to Kathy. That's OK. Once you get it, you get it. You guys have about one more minute. Nice, guys. Thirty seconds. And done. Good job. Relax. Okay. Come come on around in for a second, guys. How'd that How'd that feel? Good. You guys won. There's no. Let me see. It's not really the rules. It's more of a relay than it is a game. Um, it's continuous motion. It focuses on. If you guys remember that uh, quickness hierarchy thing I put up before, when you guys were adults, now you're kids. So you have no idea. Um, you're using visual skills, which you guys think might be important for sport, right? You're moving, so you're getting. Um, what you guys may hear, especially at high school, is energy systems. You may hear stuff like that as you're working energy. 
okay? Because you're moving, you're, you're continuously moving, and you're working on turning and orientation and orientating your body. So there's a lot of stuff going on. The thing, too, it's kind of competitive. Kind of competitive, but, like, there wasn't a winner. There really wasn't a loser, but you're almost trying to beat, you're almost trying to beat the ball versus the clock because sometimes sports not just about beating the clock. It's about beating an object. In tennis, you, gotta, you, gotta, you have to beat the ball to the end. Okay, when you guys play tennis, it's, it's almost irrelevant, but it's the concepts are, are kind of there, okay? Do you guys have any questions about the three games that we played? So we played knee tag. What was the second game? Close the gap, okay? And then we just played the tennis ball relay, okay? You guys are going to take a 10-minute break, okay? You guys can get some water. You can get some food if you need. We're going to come back here, and then we're going to work on the athletic transition skills a little bit more in depth. <sighs> Then I'm going to give you guys another 10 minute break, and then we're going to work on some of the brain stuff we talked about. Cool? All right, go for it. No, no it was really only for the game, so you can go back to. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> okay. Are you guys okay with me bounce I mean, I it's I'm trying to sort it through my head. Are you guys okay with me bouncing back and forth between you guys being Z Master trainers to give you skills you can take home, being kids and being parents? We're adaptable. You're adaptable. Perfect. Good? Kathy. Okay. So <laughs> good enough. Okay. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start talking we're gonna start talking about some of these athletic transitions that we talked about before. But we're gonna add a little bit of spin to them, okay? So we talked about this static athletic ready position and we introduced a hip turn. Okay? It basically means if I need to go one way, I need to hip turn versus stepping and pivoting, okay? The reason this is for, I need you three, I'm going to kind of recap this really quickly. You guys are going to get into your static athletic ready position like this. And you guys are going to get into a static athletic ready position. Only this time when MG says go, you guys are going to, you guys are going to hip turn like you just learned. Okay, so you're going to hip turn to the right normally. Okay, what you guys are going to do is you guys are going to have to keep your left foot on the ground and just pivot this way. Okay, and then you guys are going to freeze when you get there. So after you pivot, you're going to stop, and you're going to stop, and we're going to see what it looks like. Okay, so left foot stays on the ground. You get just 45 degrees. Yeah. To the camera. On MG's go. Okay, who won? This side. Let me ask this. Which, si which side won? This side won. Okay, one of the biggest things you have to realize is while some of the drills that kids are being taught work, it's making them slow from the beginning. So now imagine if you're in high school or even at a collegiate professional level and you still do that versus kids who started a little earlier. Maybe the parents invested the time in quality camps, quality instruction. Here's a big difference. Okay, so let's do that one more time. This time we're going to do the same thing, only we're going to go to the, you guys are going to go to the opposite direction. So for you guys, your right leg is going to stay on the ground, and you're going to pivot and face this way, and you guys are going to do the hip turn like we learned it in the beginning, okay? On MG's go. <laughs> Fair, pretty, yeah. Okay. It happens, though. <laughs> it, it happens. And, and that's really, it's a fun little demo, but it drives the point home. Um, it drives the point home of learning this stuff at an early age matters. Okay? So, again, as these camps progress, you guys will see a lot more of this stuff. Another thing that athletes have to worry about is when they get knocked on the ground. Okay? And being able to pop back up. Okay? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to work on just a pop-up. And I actually don't really care what your feet do as long as you end up standing up. So what this would look like is if I'm on the ground, 
on MG's go, you can stand up and do that for all I care. It doesn't matter. And, and again, as we start progressing, I'm going to teach you more and more ways to make this a little bit better. Okay? So you guys are going to be on the ground. MG's going to say go. And if you can do that, awesome. If you have to pop up to one knee, that, that's just as fine as well. Okay? We're, we're, we're just here to learn. We're not here to, you know, I'm not here to drill stuff into your heads. Okay? So on your stomachs. Good, and stand up. Good, back down. Good, let's do one more. Okay, good job. How'd that feel? Okay, you guys gonna be okay to do a couple variations of this? Yes? Okay. In sport, do you guys remember I put a slide up? What was the first thing we talked about, or the first skill that? I put up a picture of the dog catching a ball. <laughs> visual, right? In sport, do you guys think you always have good visual skills? Uh-uh. Sometimes you get blurred. Sometimes you get hit, and maybe you can only see one eye. Or maybe you can't see either eye. So what you guys are going to do now is you're going to lay in your stomachs, and you're going to close your eyes, and you're going to try to pop up with your eyes closed. <laughs> Close your eyes, Michael. Go. Good. <laughs> now, you don't, yeah, it's fine. Okay. On your, uh, do it one more time. On your stomachs. Very good. How'd that feel? Good. Weird. Yep. Another variation is typically when you pop up, are you going to stop or are you going to have to go somewhere? You're going to have to go somewhere, okay? So whenever you initiate a run, you can initiate on one foot or two feet. One. So you think it would make sense to pop up on one foot? Of course. Phil's, do you mind demoing because you're kind of doing it anyway? Let's watch Phil. But I want you to exaggerate. So when you pop up, really like come up on one foot. Okay, that was fast. Okay. Um, <clears throat> you're not a master trainer. You're a kid now. Okay. <laughs> We're going to do this. The pop up like that. Okay. If you need to come to a balance, that would be the digression. Okay, so one foot, still one foot, but get that base of support a little bit stable before you do it. Okay, on your stomachs. This <laughs> Good. <laughs> Back down. This time MG is going to clap. Excellent. It did. It's irrelevant. Okay, how'd that feel? A little bit off balance. Okay. How can we make this even more challenging? Close the eyes. Very good. Okay. <laughs> if you don't, guys, if you don't feel safe doing it, that's, to that's, that's fine. I'm really trying to give you guys some teasers and stuff that you know, the potential is there. Okay, kids love this. On your stomachs. Close your eyes. You're going to pop up on one foot. And I promise you the ground is only a foot drop away. So you're, there's no cliffs or anything by you, so you're not going to get hurt. <laughs> Good. Back down. Let's do it one more time. Good job. That's okay. All right. How's that, how's that feeling so far? That's okay. Is it, how are knees doing, ankles, everything's feeling good? Okay. Lay in your backs. Another thing with sport is sometimes you have to lay down and pop back up onto your stomach. Okay? Sometimes, though, 
This happens without vision. <laughs> so you're going to lay in your backs, which you already are. You're going to close your eyes. You're going to roll over onto your stomach and try to end in a push-up position. Okay? Not yet. I'm going to make sure you can do this first. So you're going to roll over into a push-up position and just try to keep your eyes closed the whole time. When MG says go. Good. Back down to your stomachs. It, it's up, if you can do the push-up, do it. If you don't want to, that's fine. The big thing, guys, especially with kids, the thing I care about is not, not how you do something, but that you know what you're doing. Okay? So as long as you know what you're doing, I'm happy with it. I don't really care what the end result is as long as you know why you're doing it, okay? So when MGs go, you're going to turn over on your stomachs, and if you want to end there, fine. You want to end in a push-up position? Even better. Go. Good job. Okay. Last, <laughs> last uh, progression. Eyes closed. You're going to turn over on your stomach, and you're going to pop up. So you're going to come to a standing position. Got it? Your eyes closed? Okay. Oh. <laughs> You're fast, dude. He's already back down. Lay back down on your stomach. Lay it down on your back. Let's do this one more time. So you're doing the whole thing now? Whole thing now. So your eyes are closed. The whole time. The whole time. You're going to turn over on your stomachs, and then you're going to pop up. On MG's go. Nice job. Relax for a second. Okay, how'd that feel? Good. Yeah, fun little variations, right? You could, possibilities around this. You can come up, eyes open, catch a ball. And we do all this stuff in the, in the camps. I mean, there's, these kids eat this stuff up. The harder it is, like the more things that can go wrong, the more kids want to do it. Like, oh, that's awesome. Can we do it like on a, on a, on a sure. Just don't, don't hurt yourself and you're fine. Because it's fun. It creates a challenge. It, cre it creates visual vestibular demands, which are the first thing we actually start looking at, Okay. Then we went over these athletic transi transitions. Okay, are you guys good? Do you guys need any water or anything? Are you guys okay for our next set of drills? You guys are good? Okay. In your bags that you got, there's going to be a paper-clipped uh, packet of some vision charts. Okay? Basically going to be pieces of paper with letters or words on them. Okay? There's going to be two thin strips. I'll actually come over here and show you what they look like. <coughs> Okay, they're going to look just like this, as you can see. Okay, they're going to look just like this. Um, master trainer caps on for a second. Every youth camp I do, each kid gets a packet of these and a sheet that has all their scores. So, and this is literally their warm-up. Do you bring your vision packet? Yes, good. Do them. And they hold them for each other, and they write down their score. Because then at the end of the five weeks, when it comes to talking to the parents about re-signing, Look, proof. In your kid's handwriting, proof. Here's the video, proof. Don't be afraid. This does not cost very much. And don't worry about other people stealing your stuff because you guys are master trainers. You guys should have enough other stuff to do that don't worry about them not coming back or something. Here's your packet. These are your drills. And I explain it to the parents. Typically what happens, you know, you do the whole reassessment stuff. Man, you know what? My kid came home, and those were taped up to the mirror while he was brushing his teeth. Sweet. My job as a co I'm doing my job as a coach. Okay? So for right now, you guys are going to need these two charts right here, and these are called saccades. Okay? So you're going to grab both of them, and then um, MG, I'm going to have you. Actually, Jordan, you, can you do these? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to have you partner up with somebody just to keep the numbers even. So grab these two, and um, oh, here you go. Okay, sweet. You guys should all have them. We're not, they're just going to hold them. 
Nope, we're not going to tape them. Okay, when you guys got them, come over here. Phil. <laughs> well, let me see. I don't know if they're going to bounce or not. No? There might be a. Okay. That's the camera. I just did. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hopefully they're bounce. That one's good. Yeah. So just hit, yeah. Hit it harder. Okay. So part of the thing that I like to do, um, and you'll actually see in. I'll show you guys a commercial later on. It is there's um, most of the kids I have doing this at about the end of the fourth week in camp because they've already probably done this a bunch of times. They're doing it at home, and I can start actually adding in a little bit more specific demands to them. So what you're going to do is, uh, Phil, can you take that ball? Okay, I'm going to hold these out here, and these are called saccade charts. Okay, it's a fancy term for moving your eyes back and forth without moving your head, more or less. Kind of a, a General overview, they should. Okay, so there's different letters on them. Okay, the whole purpose is, is trying to keep the head straight without the head moving. Head straight without the eyes moving. Okay, so if you hold it out here, it'd be, if I was holding out, I'd go N, Q, M, N, D, M, back and forth. Okay, I'm presuming right now, this is the fifth week, this is the fourth week in to the camp. So you guys are already familiar with this. So this is master trainer slash, you've been in my camp for a few weeks, you know what these are. Cool? Okay, but we're gonna add in some demands. Phil's a basketball player, okay? And if he's not, he's gonna be, okay? Even in the camps, I make all kids, football, baseball, do it. Because doing saccades while you're trying to pitch a bat or a ball, not the safest thing. So at least the ball works on some hand-eye coordination. So what Phil's gonna do, is I'm going to hold it out here. Can you see this okay? And this, because if you think of a basketball court, I don't it doesn't have to be so close. I can go a little bit further out. And as, far, as long as his posture is somewhat decent, I'm happy. I mean, I'm already asking him to call out vision drills while he's dribbling a ball. I'm not really looking for specifics yet. Um, in some of the more advanced coursework or, or camps that I do, I'll definitely work on some uh, logistics, but for right now, it's not that big of a deal. So you're going to start dribbling. You can do one hand. You can alternate. You can do whatever you want and try to call them out. O -N -D -M -E -K -F -I -G -L -T -O -H it won't bounce. <laughs> no. Um, Okay, does your balls all bounce? Yep. No, your ball doesn't. It did. <laughs> it's just you got to take it away. Thank you for your ball. Okay, <laughs> so he's going to go here. Okay, Q N E M E K F I G L T O L H T O H. Good. <laughs> okay, you guys got the idea? If the ball doesn't necessarily bounce, here, if the ball doesn't bounce, use a tennis ball. You just made it more advanced. <laughs> you just here, you're advanced. Once again, thank you for your ball. Okay, so you guys all have charts. There's yours. Partner one holds them out. Partner two, start dribbling. Can I do this? Two, sure. Hey. Jordan, just go, you know what you do? Just go left to right. Just bounce it like this. <laughs> Make 
Megan needs to go to your sports camp. Well, it's usually with the basketball. Yeah, you know what, Phil, that looks really good. Um, a way that you can modify it is you can just pass it back and forth. That's why he's so fast, is because that's all he's doing. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Okay. That was good, though, and then you can switch after you guys get it. Nice. Oh, oh. Okay. That was really, really good, Michael. That was that was really good. Wow. Yeah, that would be the next thing we worry about. That was really good, though. Yeah. No, that's okay. And they're bouncing the balls, and they did this stuff intuitively. They had done this so much that I didn't have to cue them. Their warm-up was, they were like, hey, try it with the basketball. And they did it. And that was really cool. Yeah. And it's, it's things like that which remind me, A, it's why, this is exactly why I do it, and B, there's something to it. Because this stuff is making this big of an impact on the kids that they're warming up doing advanced saccades work that I hadn't even taught them yet. That's pretty awesome. And, and that's why I was like, you know what? It's been about four weeks in, right? I think we had about two weeks left to camp. So, and, and that's typically what I started implementing is after the third or fourth week, let's start making these drills harder because kids, it, they're so smart because their nervous systems are so primed to just absorb information that if you don't make it more challenging for them, and make it, make it like way outside of their reach because they'll surprise you. And they'll go, no, this isn't hard. Really? Like, man, I got a lot of work to do because it's hard for me. You know, so we can't, we can't underestimate what they can do. Because sometimes, you know what? Sometimes they are 12 on paper and they're a 12 on movement. <laughs> they're not always that 10 on, they're not, there's not always a discrepancy gap there, okay? So that was really good. And hopefully you guys can take this back. Okay. One more drill that we're going to do, and it's actually kind of a, it's kind of an assessment, but it's also a drill. And this is an auditory drill that's going to help teach, um, teach the kids when they start getting vocal cues on the field to process what those cues are. To your left, to your right, look up, look down, to be able to process that quickly. So can I have um, Mike, do you mind if I use you? <coughs> so Mike's going to stand here. And I could do this with kids' gear on. I could do this dribbling the ball. I could do this any way. I want them to do it. Uh, how's your range of motion today? It's okay. It's okay. Very okay. Okay. Um, I will use this, um, and the reason I called it an assessment is this is probably one of the few things where I go, okay, retest your range of motion with the kids um, because it is a little bit goofy. So I'm going to give Michael, I'm going to snap in his ear. Okay, but I'm going to snap in four different positions. It's going to be top, bottom, front, or back. And with his eyes closed, he's going to have to be able to tell me where it's coming from. Okay? So close your eyes. Okay. Bottom. Bottom. Top. Front. Back. Bottom. Top. Front. Back. Good. How does that feel? Good. Good. That's simple. Now, he's got two ears. So I want to do the other side, but let's test your toe touch and see if it got better. Good. It was, and it was already pretty good, okay? Um, the kids, sometimes I see a difference, sometimes I don't. It's still fun because it confuses them. 
Okay, so now we're going to switch sides. So we're going to see if there's any discrepancy. So close your eyes. Front, bottom, back, up. Front, back, bottom, front, 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 back, bottom. Okay, good. Retouch your toe touch. It's a lot better. Okay. It was good that he didn't have any discrepancies. But let's say I have a kid. His right ear is really good. Left ear is not so good. I always run to the right. The coach is always standing on the right yelling the cues. <laughs> like, can't hear you. He's <laughs> in the wrong cue. So, and, and this is really where it's the – this is where I – this is the conversation I have with the coaches. So remember I talked about the different people involved. Okay, coach, athlete, coach, athlete, parent, athlete, parent, athlete, coach. This is when I have a conversation with the athletes – then I have a conversation with the coach about it if I see anything. Michael did pretty well, so I'm not too worried if he screws it up a couple times. But do you guys want to try it? Cool. Try a range of motion, okay? You can do a forward bend. I mean, you guys should know assessments you could do, okay? Then when you're done with it, though, listen, when you're done with it, go back to your saccades with the bouncing because bouncing involves auditory responses, okay? Sorry. <laughs> test something. <laughs> Just keep doing. Right. It may take a little while. Oh, so you got so you got a lot better. Okay, great. I think you want to actually rotate first while you're rotating. Yeah. Okay. That's fine, Michael. Reassess him after using a couple. <laughs> Try the other side. That's fine. Have her, have her, re, have her reassess. Make sure you guys are switching now. <laughs> Did it get any better on that side? Just, just me snapping. Okay. That, well, I mean, it, you know, I think he killed people for a living at one point, so he may not. Yeah, when he hears a, a brain break. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, so what is it, I think for him, you go, <laughs> some soothing sounds. <laughs>
Yeah. Okay. Re retest your, retest the cades real quick for me. Better? Yeah. Was it better for you too? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. It's okay. The ball doesn't have the ball doesn't have a lot of weight to it. Wow, beautiful. When you, when you guys, guys, when you guys are done, just take a quick five-minute break and then meet me back in the front. <laughs> yeah, it could be whatever. It's just, it's just teaching kids to. Hey, is your oh. <laughs> Good. <clears throat> Do you at least have a better idea as to maybe why kids need to be trained certain ways? Okay? At least the motivation piece, okay? So now what I need you guys to do is you have your adult cap, your youth hat, and your uh, parent hat, okay? Put on your master trainer hat for a second. <coughs> I touched on this briefly in the back, <coughs> but if you guys Monday morning, or you guys fly home and you guys, you know what, I want to start working with kids. You have a group of kids. How you orientate your games and your drills will matter, and it will save you from a lot of lawsuits, okay? I, no one got hurt here. Kind of a weird way to introduce it, but I just want you to look at um, setting this drill up. This is the wrong way to set up a drill. Go. This is Isaiah and Michael. Do you guys see where that may potentially run into a problem? Yeah. Potentially. Okay. Um, luckily, like I said, luckily no one got hurt. But these are all just things to consider when you're setting up your drills. Hey, if I'm doing two cones, are they going to run into each other? Where are these things going to intersect? <coughs> okay, and then this is the last video. <laughs> Second to last video. Um, okay, <laughs> this is Max, and this clip is only like four seconds long. Max is one of those high motivation, low skill people. <laughs> Did you guys see that? Let's watch old Max. He literally forgot what to do mid-run, okay? <laughs> but here's the coolest thing. Is he smiling? Yeah. yeah, we were all smiling, right? See, this is at the middle school <laughs> where I teach. And, and it's just, you know, I, I show these videos just so you guys get an idea as to what some of the kids look like actually training and doing drills. Um, this is another one. Um, the form from a, a – since your master trainer caps are on, don't critique me for the form – but there was some progression, so at least it was a good start. So this was trying to teach him a wall drill. Knees up, toss spine. Go. Not, I Knees mean, not up. bad. They're kind of close to the wall, Go. right? Yellow shirt. He's one of those high motivation, high skill kids. Um, kind of born on third base. He's, a, I think, he's a football player or just starting to play. Um, these kids were all in seventh grade though when this video was shot. Oh. Go. There's some technique stuff. Whoops. And then 
first time in a video here. This is the second one. Okay. Flip. Flip. So I don't know if you can notice or if you notice in the first one, now they're, they're not landing flat footed. So they're a little bit actually more up on the balls of their feet. And I walked them down the wall a little bit. Um, but these, again, these are some of the running drills that we need to go over as part of the warm ups. And then flip. in a group, it's hard. Flip, flip, flip. Start, start. Okay. Um, in a group, sometimes I got tons and tons of footage. Um, whoops, iTunes. Okay. Um, doo -doo. Okay. In a group setting with those kids, you have to kind of pick your poisons. Okay. What's going to be the high payoff drill to teach these kids right now that maybe they can get better with today? Maybe they'll get better with later on. I've taught some drills, to be honest with you, that I saw that and go, eh, it's not even worth it. I literally threw it away. I probably haven't done that drill with them since. But for me as the coach, I need to realize just because they didn't succeed then doesn't mean they can't improve. So maybe they can't do that drill or maybe some of the other marching drills, the skip drill, the run. Maybe once they get a year older, I can revisit that drill. Maybe that drill is not good for those seventh, seventh graders. On an individual basis, it may be perfect. So... <coughs> It kind of brings us to, so master trainer hats go off, parent hats come back on, okay? So typically I just had a half hour conversation, 45 minute conversation with you guys, okay? On who I am as a coach, why you should trust me with your kids, how I go about not only getting your trust, but making your kids better, and what exactly complete athlete is, and how complete athlete can benefit you, okay? The complete athlete program, all the camps that I run have a 100% money back guarantee. Okay? There's zero risk. There's zero risk. Um, zero risk has a double meaning. There's zero monetary risk. If your kids don't get better, like all those videos have, I'll give you money back. If you follow the program. Don't show up three times and tell me the program didn't work. That's not what I'm talking about. These are kids. They show up. They commit. Because out of the three and a half, four years of doing this, it hasn't happened yet, okay? There's zero risk, okay? This is a quote. This is uh, from Abby. She was one of my high school swimmers. So I thought that the complete athlete, she missed the A. Six, well, actually, I missed the A. She didn't write the PowerPoint. Um, <laughs> sixth athlete class was fun and challenging. I not only got stronger, but I shaved 14 seconds off of my 500 freestyle during my high school season. Thanks, Jason. Yeah, you know what she did? Same stuff you guys just did. It's a little bit more structured with a little bit more time. Okay? So where do you guys go from here? This is a two-day-a-week camp. Okay? Each camp typically is $200 a kid equals about $20 a class. Okay? The kids who would typically benefit from doing this kind of class are going to be the kids who don't necessarily have a flexible schedule. So these are kids who are maybe tied into other sports. They can maybe only commit two days a week to training. They still get the same benefit, just may not happen as fast, okay? Um, and again, heavily involved in other curricular stuff. You know what, I have piano lesson. You know what, um, I have guitar. You know what, my kids started horseback riding, okay? So that's a two day a week option. The three day a week option, the price only goes up by 100. You're still about the $20 a class. And these are kids who are ideally kids who are really good at doing a couple hours of drills during the week on their own. Okay, so maybe the kids who actually play pickup baseball on the weekends, okay? They don't need, they need a little bit more than two days, but they don't need, they don't need to make this a full-time job, okay? This option is really good at offering a foundation and filling the gaps that they might be missing from their other coaching stuff, okay? Finally, I offer a four-day-a-week camp. These are your kids who are pre-preseason, Hey, you know what? I got preseason coming up. I got, I got five weeks to get going, okay? These are kids and parents who want fast results, okay? They want the results as fast as they possibly can get them. But knowing that you guys also have the commitment, I'm, I'm not going to push you guys into a camp or push your kids into a camp if you can't get them there, okay? It's the same benefit. Same camp is the same instructor. You're learning the same stuff. But, and this is where me being the assistant buyer for you guys comes in, okay? I need to help you guys make the best decision 
that's going to allow you to actually come. Because I got news for you. If you guys sign up for a four-week camp and two weeks into it, you realize, wow, I got to bring my kids somewhere four days a week on top of being the head of a household, on top of doing other stuff. It's not going to be a good situation for anybody. It's going to be choppy. Okay, and I'm sure you guys have done that. You guys ever sign up for something? You think it's going to fit in your schedule and it doesn't? Whoops. Money's gone. Money's gone. And now you can't even take advantage of that money back guarantee because you're not even committed to the program. You know? So th these are typically, you know, these are the traits. Okay, if you guys think that your kids don't really have a flexible schedule or you know that you don't have a flexible schedule to get them there, okay, maybe this is the best option for you. Okay? Or maybe you know that your kid's a kind of self-motivator, one of these high-skill, high-motivated kids. Maybe they don't need me, you know. They're doing stuff on their own. This is really where the three-day week comes in because they're still getting foundational work, just going to kind of fill in the gaps and the missing pieces of what they're doing, okay? How long do these um, each one's an hour. They last about two, two, three, four days a week, and it's anywhere between five to six weeks. Yeah, because typically it's over the summer. So, um, these are summer camps held in Denver. So uh, I'll see a kid maybe for month of June, <coughs> month of August. It's typically June, July, August, kind of when they're out of school. Um, I do. I have run into four-day-a-week kids. They go on vacation or something pops up, so it changes a little bit. But each one's typically an hour, two, three, four days a week. So, again, the four-day-a-week camp are the kids who want to see the results fast and can commit a lot of time to the process. That's the biggest thing. So if you guys know that your kids can and you know that your kids, you know, I got the time, I'm flexible, et cetera, you know what, the four-day-a-week option's for you. And you're still only paying $20 a class, just a little bit more money up front, a little bit more gas, stuff like that, you know. So what I want to do is I want you guys to think about where I can fit you guys in because if you maybe you took a camp before, maybe you didn't have time. Maybe you didn't have the time restraints. So you know what? Do you have time now? Okay. You have the value. Okay. I'm trying to provide you the value for it and the rapport to help make your decision. Do you have a question? No? Okay. Lastly, this is a quote. It's kind of a long quote, but this is Caitlin. She's, uh, she's a little bit older, but she was a competitive roller girl. Okay, and they actually came in third nationals 2009. I was looking for something to increase speed, change overall body composition, and decrease the chance of injury. I'm a competitive roller derby player, and I wanted to improve all aspects of my sport. I signed up during the offseason to get in shape and prepare me for the season. I have had great experience with Jason's complete athlete classes that I've signed up again, and the results keep coming. I really want to focus on the results keep coming because, guys, it's almost the same stuff. It's an inch wide and a mile deep. She gets better every time she signs up and she feels it. Okay, I've had a great, um, da, da, da. it's such a different approach and Jason has been a big part of it. He pushes me to try harder and work on technique. He pushes me to work harder and work on technique. Not just push harder, push harder and work on technique. So I'm pushing her harder to work on her technique. I laugh that I don't feel it during the workout. It ain't about killing her, but I feel it the next day. So again, if you guys had unlimited time to train your kids, where could they be in five weeks? Where could they be in 10 weeks, eight weeks? All I can do is provide a platform and a format to help your kids excel. It's up to you to get them there. It's also up to you to write the check. I mean, I, I laugh at that, but also you have to take this into consideration. If you guys are coming to see me four days a week, that's more gas. That's more food because they're burning more calories. I mean, these are things to consider. I don't want to push you guys into a program you're not ready for. It doesn't make any sense, okay? Because ultimately, I, don't, I, I care about having the kids there. I don't care about false commitments that you guys can't keep up with. It's, it's, it's not the way I really want to do things, okay? So again, two days a week. You have a flexible schedule, maybe a couple other things going on. This is your program. Three days a week, you know your kids are kind of a go-getter. They're kind of that motivation. I would say high motivation, maybe low skill. They really want to do it, help build the foundation work. And then the kids who want to come in for four days a week, these are your high motivation, high skill, probably going to go on to be very successful athletes. Um, this, is their, this is their life, okay? So do you guys have any questions? No? Okay. We finished a few minutes short. 
So what I want to actually do is go over two different things. One, I want to talk about this DVD right here. Okay, this DVD, if I put it in my computer, just to go over kind of what it looks like. Notice that PK, I forgot to hand it over there. Let's make sure. <laughs> Just give me 30 seconds. Okay. So you guys are going to pop it in. It's going to play in quick time. Okay. And what it is, yeah. Okay. This is the exercise index. This is the recap of some of the drills that we went over. And this typically will be something that after the end of each camp, the kid gets. So what game is that? Okay. <laughs> and these are like real kids, guys. This isn't rehearsed. This isn't, I mean, this is like, this is about as real as you can get. Right. Okay. So, so what game is this? Close the gap. And you can see that's where I do them. I do them in fields. I do them in, you know, schools, tennis ball relay. And if you notice, too, when he throws the ball, what do you see right? What do you? Uh, nope. Parents. Parents. Thank you. See right there? Parents. So that's at the that's at the middle school. Okay, brain fitness, kind of like some of the saccade stuff we went over. So this is called an affinity walk. I apologize we didn't cover it today. Um, typically, you'll see it. Um, Here's a jog into it. <coughs> so I, I videotaped when I saw the kids doing it. I, I grabbed my camcorder as much as possible. I don't know if they know, I don't know if they were right. It doesn't matter. You know, was, I, I guess I was presuming it was. So here's some balance stuff. I mean, this kid. I mean, like this one's like bobbing his head around, and um, Danny's got. That didn't happen with me. Hand chasing. <laughs> yeah. Go. So again, the, the, you know, high motivation, high skill kids. You can kind of point them out when you start to see them. Down. <laughs> I mean, you could. See, I, I'd hate to. Uh, I'd hate to pin. I'd hate to point kids out. I, I'm gonna have to. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's kind of important. Good. Feet together. Down. So so Kathy had asked in the beginning about what percentage of kids fall into the motivation categories. Um, there's typically going to be, just like the kid with the cast, he's the high motivation, low skill. <laughs> he's right there. <laughs> right? There's one in every group. Um, Amethyst, the one who looks like she's doing a tactical frog, <laughs> right, over, right over there. Um, high motivation, getting a lot better skill. Um, 
the thing with her, and again, I'm not trying to, you guys, these kids have no really relationship to you. Um, seventh grade video, she's in eighth grade now, um, comes from a low income family. She gained like 40 pounds. She lost all athletic skill whatsoever. And all, I mean, the motivation's still there. She shows up. She's my little linebacker. Um, but she looked so good in these videos. And, and that's the hard part is I, I then get stuck with the situation where how do I handle that? You know, um, and it's not a it's not a one day it's not a five minute conversation. There's some you know intervention that may have to happen. So I want to point that out just so you can kind of start to identify the kids from this group. Good job. The kids from this group versus the Go. kids from the other group. Go. 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 There's that pivot step Excellent. wrong, right? These kids are a little bit older. They're, um, I think, in ninth grade now. They're, yeah. Yeah. Go. Go. <laughs> Go. Go. Good. On your stomach. And, you know, they show up in jeans, hooded sweatshirts, you know, like good athletic attire. So this is some medicine ball work. Um, these medicine balls were um, bought from a grant money. Basically, the instructor of the grant and the program came up to me. She goes, I have $1,000 I have to spend by Tuesday. What do you want? Uh. Well, I want a bunch of Dynex balls and some sleds and some ropes. And we literally, we have ropes and we have sleds, and they go out, and they just, you know, they train. They train just like I would normal kids. You can kind of see some of them in the background. This one's like wearing a cape on his head. I mean, th this is real, guys. This is what, you know, this is, this is real. And this is some bonus features. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing them unless you know the kids can handle it. This one's probably safe. The next two, probably not. So you can see the rope. That's basically the weight room. Um, so this is actually this year. What do we say about low motivation, low skill kids? You can see him, and what, what you can't see is, you know, Ocean's trying that. He's smiling, of course. Um, over here, he's, you know, this kid's trying. You know, he's trying, but he's looking at him. And then Amethyst is actually mid-coordination chart. We keep the coordination charts up. Um, and he's a little one. He's watching. And then one of the other bigger kids, uh, the, the squats are not from us, um, the rope's over there, and he was probably in the gym or something doing the sled. So I have access to a lot of this stuff. We don't use a lot of it because... Thank you. <laughs> just because they're children. Um, I do actually, I did start teaching them the bench press just so they feel feel cool. Um, and that's kind of one of those things you got to kind of yin and yang it. You know, if it makes them feel better, hey, I want a big bench. Really cool story, though, is um, there's Amethyst and there's two more girls in this group now. Uh, one girl came in, she's like, I can't bench press. She's like, I can't bench press the bar. And she didn't want to do it. That's what all the boys, you know, all the other guys wanted to do. And I'm like, all right, let's show them what you can do. And it was those typical bad setup, and she was just never taught. So I said, here's what you're going to do. Class meets Monday and Wednesday. I want you to, every time you come in, you're going to do it. Okay, so class started the middle of September. Here we are the middle of October, close to the end of October. She now does three reps. She walks in, one, two, three, racks it. And the look on her face, guys, I, I mean, it's like, it's like giving me goosebumps just thinking about how she went from zero to three, and now she's one of the guys. She's not alienated anymore because I brought her up that chain, low motivation, low skill. Now she's low motivation, high skill, and it keeps progressing from there. So it's really, really cool to see him progress. And here's John, eighth grade. Nice. And Isaiah, of course, whatever you do, I have to do. This, this. Watch. Yeah. Now, <laughs> the beginning part, <laughs> yeah, the beginning part of that video, I can find it. Give me two seconds. Okay. 
This is the actual beginning part of that clip. It's very important if you guys listen to what I say. Be careful, man. I did not tell you to do this, right? <laughs> I made sure that was on video because he has, look at him. You can tell he's that kind of mischievous, like, yeah, girls like me. You know, and, and he's that good, though. He's that good that he does this stuff. Um, this is what eighth graders do. They literally, oh, time to go. And they're running around and they're doing insane stuff. And I'm, I'm like, oh, no. Right. So he does it once, and that was cool enough, right? I go, oh, no. <laughs> and look, that kid's like, are you serious? That was great right over there, right? That's John who did the thing before. He's like, dude, that was awesome. You know what's really cool, though, is if you think about that, the, the first clip of him falling, that was almost his progression to get here. I mean, in, in a kind of weird kind of way. Um, so we did that, and I just thought it was, I thought it was a really cool video. So all those drills, that video that you just saw, is actually what's on your disc. That you guys, if it doesn't work, let me know. I'll email you another one. Or you can just have my computer because it's one eight one. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is a couple years ago, I actually designed a kids' fitness game. Okay, um, I was fortunate enough to live in Connecticut at the time. And I was friends with a lawyer, and I was friends with um, a guy, and I never knew what this guy did. He's like, oh, I'm in, I'm in marketing and packaging. I said, okay, you're in packaging. I'm not really too sure what that means, but whatever. So I said, hey, I got this great game. I want to come up with a kid's card game where kids could have drills and they turn them over. So he goes, okay, well, make me something up. Uh, my girlfriend at the time was very – she was a pretty good illustrator. So she drew these things up, these little kids up. And I gave him to the guy, and this was the actual turnaround of what he came up with. Okay? Pretty cool, right? And then the back side is this, called Hitting the Deck. Okay? What I've actually done for you guys for today, and I'm probably going to actually start actively pursuing launching this, is we were able to change the names of the drills into some of the drills that you guys just did. Cross crawls, pop-ups. Um, I'm not sure what the other ones are. Matt said they're done. The only thing I need to do is to get your email addresses, okay? Um, I did have a printout form, but Mike called me at 6 o'clock this morning, crying, telling me, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> he didn't cry. He's like, hey, Jay, I'm stressing out. I'm doing my talk tomorrow on stress hormones. <laughs> um, <laughs> stop being your work, Michael. <laughs> but, uh, no, what I want to do for you guys is um, I want to email this to you and give you guys an opportunity to try it with your kids and give me feedback so I can at least know what needs to be changed or something. So you guys should be getting this in your email. Again, just ha have respect for me and what I put into it. I mean, share it with your friends, but don't sell it to them. Don't steal the idea for yourself. I already made it. There's no reason to go make something else. Um, but you'll be, getting the, you'll be getting this email to you soon. And then if you guys know anyone in Denver or anything like that, just send them my way. Cool? Any questions? No, any, any, any questions outside, like youth fitness questions as far as sales or anything? Mike. I'm curious, sorry, sorry, like I assume that's pretty much the same way you did, but is like that, like I don't want to suppress their athleticism, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I don't want them to break their neck in my place. Like, how do you generally handle that? I let them do it once or twice. <laughs> I'm serious. I give, I give them a little, and then I go, okay, not, not right now. I know you can do it. Let's not do it right now. Because I, for the longest time, go, don't do that. Don't do that. So what are you doing? Did I just tell you not to do that? So I go, all right, man, you know what? Not only am I going to let you do it, I'm going to videotape it, and I'm going to glorify it. You get it one time. <laughs> and I said, I didn't tell you to do this, dude. And I videotaped it. Now he's a star, but there's some responsibility that, that will hopefully come along with that. So I give him a little, but then I make sure that he don't do it all the time. Because this kid, all the time. I mean, where is he? He's like climbing bleachers. and there's, I mean, it's like bad news bears sometimes with these kids, you know, Phil? Uh, you could be. I actually showed the mom, and the mom's, the mom was proud. She, I mean, she's like, wow, you know, that's so cool that you videotaped, and that's so cool that you gave him an, a voice. Because here's a kid who got kicked out of two or three other classes. He was in, like, a Lego robotics thing and a couple other classes. And, you know, sometimes these kids just have, they're in the wrong place. It's not the kid. They're in the wrong place. So, yeah, it's really interesting. Jordan. Like, what's the greater risk that he might 
Fergie felt fair is probably about as much a rebound as Cowan felt in the pre draft as him as a possession metric wise or just the you know, pieces he kept on the idea of him being like the next Andre Drummond or something. I don't think that's the same thing. Uh and I think that Well It's a, he he didn't have he didn't have an outlet for it. Okay. The biggest thing too, this guy's right here. American Red Cross CPR first aid instructor. <laughs> I, and not only do I teach it, I can, I can, I mean, I kind of make a joke about that, but actually, as I can fit with my Z Health stuff and actually Red Cross, I can follow legal guidelines and I can also do things if I have to. And I, I have had to, I've seen kids, they want to try it like other kids, and I go, it. You know, you know where it's going when it's happened, and you're like, let me just ride this out. Maybe it won't be so bad. And then next thing you know, can I have two ice packs? Uh, Jake just, like, twisted his ankle really bad. I think you better call the parent. And all of a sudden, it's a phone call home. So you do it, and you don't want to, you don't want to block anyone from trying anything, but, you know, sometimes it's, please make this work. Just one time, don't. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or, minimum, or, or minimum damage, you know. But, you know, listen, your kids are safe with me. That's the biggest thing. So enjoy the ride, right? That's what it's about. Do what to do and know when to play. All right? Yeah, thank you for your time.